Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have the rest of my January set up for you. Um, I try my best to stick to the you know starry constellation theme that I have going on for the month of January. I've got to say that's the weirdest part of bullet journaling for me is sticking to the same theme for so long. Um, I don't hate it because I love stars and constellations and things. I just, I don't know why I find them so visually appealing, but I do. Um, I have some layouts for everybody in this one. I have simpler layouts and then at least what I find complicated, more complicated layouts uh, for advanced bullet journal people. Maybe it's not so complicated, but it was for me. If you enjoy this video while you're watching, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that we can hang out and talk about bullet journal stuff. Let's get to it. All right, here we go. This layout is pretty simple. It is one of the easier ones from this week. The easiest one is actually next, um, but I am basing this one heavily around stickers. I know I don't see a lot of bullet journalers doing that, but Wednesday is National Sticker Day. That is a thing, look it up. <laughs> so I wanted to make this spread for this week very sticker focused. So I used my Micron there to divide into six days. I just combined Saturday and Sunday. They're not really busy these days anyway. So um, then I'm using these brand new beautiful fiction glitter pens. I can't pronounce the names. I think it's Kisse LeMay. Um, anyway, I know glitter pens takes me back, right? Glitter pens and stickers. This is the best throwback spread. <laughs> It takes a minute to color in this bar at the top because it is, you know, it's an ink pen, not a marker, but it is so worth it. It kind of looks like metallic here when I'm coloring it in, but in person, it is the prettiest glitter. Like these are not the glitter pens of our childhood. These are adult glitter pens. <laughs> They're really pretty. Now I am going to put the days, well the dates for the days of the week in the middle with this mild liner. I just bought the circle maker on Amazon. Pretty cool little invention there. Um, I know it's so simple to make circles, but this will make my life a lot easier. I am also using a mild liner to color it in, but I end up going over later after I record it um, with that gray glitter pen and it just, the tones match a lot better. And then of course you can see the glitter in the sunlight. Now, I could have used a paint marker to put the days of the week on, but I I get along really well with my jelly roll. Uh, it never lets me down. I don't have to shake it to get it started. I don't have to worry about there being more ink in one place than the other. Apologies if you heard that snow plow. It is, we kind of got a surprise thunder snow today. It was really cool. Anyway, I am using my jelly roll 10 to write in the numbers for the days. And I pulled most of these stickers from the Happy Planner Stargazer sticker book. Um, the, most of them are from the newest one. There's two versions of the sticker book. I have the OG one that I fell in love with. I like the new one even better, but I don't actually have the new one. I bought some, just some of the sticker sheets from a friend in a planner group. It was really neat. Um, and I still have some left. I didn't even use them all in the spread. <laughs> So it's kind of hard to tell from this far away, but those stickers are meant to look like constellations. They're just colored in constellations. There's also a really cool sheet of stickers that don't have the color on the inside and they look even more like constellations, but that left way too much white space at the top of this and I didn't, I wasn't a fan of that look. So I went with the colored in ones instead. They also had cool little things on the stickers that said like what a dolphin represented, what an owl represented, but I didn't want the words. I just wanted the figures, so I cut that off. And I thought it was neat to make that dolphin look like it was actually jumping through something by cutting the tail off. <laughs> Sorry, that sounds weird to say to cut the tail off. <laughs> but you get me, you feel me. It came with a ton of these star stickers that really helped to fill in the white space. Um, I know these colors don't match my setup, but we're, we're just going to overlook that because, <laughs> like I said, I wanted to use stickers this week for National Sticker Day, and I, I did use blue. There just weren't enough of the blue. That's almost all of the blue stickers at the top there, so I had to add in some of the purple. And I'm not mad about it. I love purple anyway. Do you guys do that? I'm curious. 
this is my first bullet journal. Um, so I'm new to this whole sticking to a theme for the entire month. Do you guys do that or do you stray? Tell me. <laughs> I had to put a special banner on the day, on the 13th on sticker day so I could commemorate it. Honestly, I like to look for days like this anyway to fill in my planner right now. This is my Amanda Rach Lee washi tape. I was waiting for these babies to restock forever. And again, the camera did not do it justice. There is some freaking cool glitter in that tape. It is, it is, it is mesmerizing in person. Uh, it's so pretty. I put a video of it on my Instagram today and you can kind of see, but it still doesn't do enough justice. I'm trying my best to get into the world of layering. I watch, according to Allie, a lot here on YouTube. She's not a bullet journaler, she's a happy planner, but she always does these really cool layers with stickers and boxes and quotes and things like that. And I told myself, hey, that looks good, I wanna try it. It also helped fill in some of the space at the bottom because I know the point is to have space to write at the bottom, but I don't have a lot going on this week. And I wanted to fill in the white space a little bit. I also tried to tie it in with my other spreads by drawing some of the same star doodles in that glitter pen. So there was more glitter everywhere and those star doodles I used in some of my other spreads. Try my best to be cohesive here. I'm really proud of this corner. <laughs> I know it's such a weird thing to say, but I am. I'm also filling in sticker day with a sticker. I cut off what the what it said there. I had forgotten to do that before I brought it in on camera, but isn't that one pretty? That really very majestic book. You noticed earlier too, I went in and whited out part of that line because I didn't want it to peek through the sticker. It looked a little weird to interfere with the sun rays. And I pulled from the sticker book those bullet points. I like to have bullet points. They add color, they help to keep me organized. Um, so that's what I did. I also put the calendar on my weekly spread. I just like to be able to see the days of the month all at once. And I like to have an excuse to use my stamps. Let's be real. <laughs> I tried a little bit of layering down here, but not as much because I, I didn't want it to be too busy. All right, on this spread, I am sticking with the theme on this one. I'm doing a better job. I am using the same craft paper that I used in my monthly setup. And I am, I have kind of a square layout going on. I found this on Instagram. Obviously it was different. It was black paper and white marker and stuff. It was cool. Um, so I tried my own spin on it with this craft paper. I am actually gonna write on some of these, like some of those boxes with the craft papers are going to be for my days of the week. And then some of them will just be for decoration and I'll write in some of the blank boxes too. The most time consuming part for this one was cutting the squares to the right size. Other than that, this spread is super simple. So this is definitely a very beginner friendly way to make your bullet journal look a little more fancy and jazz it up. This one, it didn't take me much time at all to make this. I also accidentally cut out part. I did go and fill it in with some star doodles, but I, I accidentally hit stop recording instead of start recording. You know, that happens to me more than I'd care to admit. <laughs> I'm going back with my 10 jelly roll in white to write the days of the week. And then I will also go back in with my micron and write the days of the week on the white boxes. Now, I wanted to keep it simple, but I did kind of feel like those white boxes were too plain. So I took a Tombow and just put like a gray stripe in those white boxes. I think it looks really cool. I accidentally got too much ink on my stamp there, so I had to scrape it off and then smooth it out with an eraser and it was good as new. Thank you, Shade Campbell. I use that tip a lot. 
Now, can someone give me a tip to not slam my writing upwards on a page? Sorry guys, I, I filled it in um, off camera by accident. Now this spread, this wasn't the one that I think is a little more challenging. At least it was for me. Um, I love to doodle and things like that. And I, I admire the heck out of artists. I love Starry Night. I love to watch bullet journalers you get into some really detailed acrylic graph drawings and things like that. But this is the farthest that I have ever taken it. So I'm trying Starry Night. That Tombow is actually perfect because the streaks in that little rock formation there, um, it actually mimics the real Starry Night if you've ever seen it. It's all about seeing the brush strokes in there and I think that's a neat way to mimic it with a brush mark. Now, uh, things did happen on this side of the page. <laughs> um, it was looking so good with my drawings and my colors and then I mess it up, you'll see in a minute. I will say this acrylograph and the navy blue and the light blue were perfect for this. I don't know why it's so satisfying to write with a paint marker. I guess because the lines are just so bold and thick. It's also a really satisfying color combination. Navy blue, light blue, and then that pretty yellow that I'm going to bring in. Now I have the yellow acrylograph. I love this color. I used it in my bullet journal setup, like my actual setup. Um, and that was it. I just used it for a quote, but it's kind of acting like it's out of ink here. I'm not sure what happened. I have to keep pressing down on it and shaking. I did shake it before I used it too. So I'm not sure. I don't know what I did to anger this marker. Anyway, it looks great. And then I colored it in well and smudged it when I went to erase. And I tried to scrape the paint off, you know, like sometimes I can scrape the ink off like I did on the last setup and it was just not cooperating. So I did a little surgery there and sliced off the entire half of the page and had to start over. It ends up looking good though, I promise, stick with me. It was just, oh, it was heartbreaking because that sketch was, <laughs> I was really proud of that sketch and then I messed it up and had to rip it out, but what are you gonna do? I like these little, if in the actual Van Gogh drawing, they're, the, whole, the entire background is blue. And I thought about doing that with watercolor, but I wanted to keep keep I wanted to keep this as simple as possible, so um, I'm just sticking with the acrylographs and Tombows. I did end up using that Tombow to color in the moon this time because you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> I didn't want to risk messing it up again. I am also mixing in these awesome zebra click art. I guess you call them markers because they're like a they're like a fine liner or like a felt tip, but they click. They're pretty cool. Um, I actually recorded a review of them and of the friction glitter pens. Let me know if you'd be interested to see that or which one you would like to see first. I love these little pens. I dare say, I like them better than the paper mate flares, and I'm a teacher, so that's a bold statement. I wanted different shades of yellow. I was kind of limited. I didn't realize how few like yellow supplies that I had that weren't neon. So technically I think that click art's more of a tan, but it looks really good together. Now I messed up this poor little moon again. <laughs> I do so well with the mountains and the swirls and honestly they look more complicated, but this stinking, well, I guess technically it's a moon because it's a starry night, but it's yellow. So it makes me think of a sun. Um, it's fine for a minute and then I make some of those lines too thick like that so I covered up the moon it's a good thing I saved that page I cut out at least I still used it right I didn't waste anything and then I went in with a neon <laughs> pen that I hated 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 so I used that plain paper yet again to cut out the crescent and start over 
It looks much better now. I was gonna edit that part out because I didn't want to bore you or make you feel frustrated like I did when I was making this. Um, but So I think it's nice to know that, you know, everybody messes up, we're humans. Even if it looks good online, the finished product looks great. Sometimes it's a journey to get there. So I tried to make it as short as possible, but I kept it in there. I went ahead and added into some Crayola Super Tips. I actually bought a 100 pack of the Super Tips too. Um, <laughs> I'm stationary obsessed, what can I say? If you would be interested in a video where I swatch all of those puppies, let me know. That would take a minute to film, so I'm hesitant to do it if nobody wants to see it. So rather than filling in the background with watercolor like I was considering doing, I'm trying to make the swirls as big as possible, even the little yellow ones. Now if you look at the actual painting, there is some blue on the yellow ones too. That's why I added some blue to a few of those. Look at that straight line. I was super proud of that. <laughs> I have never made a line that beautiful without a ruler. Maybe I'm getting some practice in. This is only the first month. I did mess it up a little bit right there, but it's not bad. Nothing my little jelly roll can't fix anyway. Now I'm doing the same layout as the first one. So obviously you could keep this much simpler than I did. Um, Maybe you just do some of those little circles. Maybe you just do the swirl. Maybe you just do the big moon. It's totally up to you. The rest of it is simple though to make up for it and to balance it a little bit. Here's my handy dandy circle maker again. Best, I think it was like $4 I've ever spent. <laughs> I did want a little more of that yellow. Um, I'm not usually a yellow fan, but I like that tone. I did not put a calendar at the bottom of this one. Uh, I don't know why, I just, <laughs> this one to me looks more like a pretty drawing than a planner, and I, 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 for some reason I felt like a calendar would take away from that. So I am filling in that white space a little bit more. And then I will go in, so, so, so far I've used mild liners, markers, super tips, click pens. <laughs> I've used it a lot, but I could have honestly done all of this with super tips. I just have all the supplies, so I want to make sure I use all the supplies. You know what I mean? Get my money's worth. I also add some glitter to it with those friction pens. Oh yeah, that that looks super cool in person. It, it, it just doesn't do justice. All right, my friends, let me know which layout is your favorite. Do you want to see more simple layouts for me? Do you want to see more like this guy? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel so we can talk planner stuff. Bye friends.